This is the PodCraft Podcast, episode four for Monday, August 10th. Today we'll focus on Modern Times Beer. This is the PodCraft Podcast, where we talk about craft beer from Southern California and beyond. This is your hosts, Chris and Charlie. Behind, uh, we have producer Steve behind the soundboard, keeping us in line. This is episode three, August 3rd, 2020. I take that back. Episode four. It's episode four. The quickening. It is episode four, August 10th, 2020. Today we're going to uh, focus on beers from, from modern times. Thank goodness. Modern times. I'm a modern times fan. I am a big fan of modern times. A little bit about modern times. Modern times was... Uh, just uh, a little? Just I mean, a, we could read for days on this I crew. I think you could. I think you could. You know, modern times is, is kind of unique. They did a, uh, um, a a crowdfunding. You know, venture venture capitalists was like $1.25 million. They they rose to, to start a 30-barrel system. Uh a 30-barrel brewing system right down there in, in Point Loma, which turned into modern times. Loma Land. They, uh, they, they started out and... It's a uh, good spot, except they need parking. Yeah, parking is terrible down there. It sucks. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're five minutes from the water. They're, you know, they're, I think uh, they, yeah, but I think they need to buy the building across the street and just open it up into a parking lot. They've bought almost every other building in California. Yeah, yeah. They, well, uh, I think they have, uh, what, six locations, seven well, locations? They buy the strip joint behind them, but... Um, still is a that's few a possibility. Of, I'm sure still is a few of those uh, located nearby. Uh, so, so they, you know, to touch on that, they have uh, their Point Loma location. Uh, they, they, they're over in North Park, Los Angeles, Portland, Santa Barbara, Encinitas, Oakland, and Anaheim. 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 Open in Anaheim. Now, uh, they're they're uh, canning their their 12 ounce cans of stout up there. So. Uh, they're, you know, they're one of my favorite stout breweries. It's a very important place, then. So they, it's, yeah. Well, the uh, I haven't seen the place yet. You know, we're in the middle of a pandemic still. Yeah. Day four thousand. I wasn't going to mention that. The uh, they have a pool up there. They have a pool in the a backyard pond, at the brewery. Pond is good for you. They have a canning line and a well, exactly. <laughs> I, I'm going to have to. Uh, I'm going to trade in my overalls. You watch Caddyshack. Put and on get some that shoes. <laughs> Swing over to the pool. Are we going to hit beers now? Let's do some beers. You just That's enough there. of us talking. Yeah, All right, so what are we doing here? This is Shrine of the Forsaken Gods. It is a sour, my friend. Ooh-wee! Is it sour? And it is smelling funky. And my favorite line, it smells like a fart in a bottle. Very well. But it usually tastes amazing if that's how it smells. So the... Uh, the Shrine of the, the the Forsaken Gods, is that what you said? Yes, sir. Very well. So this is uh, Shrine of the Forsaken Gods, uh, part two. Uh, it's a... Um, it's amazing. Wow. A little head there. A little, little bit. Uh, this was one of my favorite beers when it, when it first came around. So the uh, uh, real quick write-up on this. Uh, uh, now in its second... Er- uh, this is a, a formidably tasty flavor beast in uh, it's a funky flavor smelling. beast began as a collaboration with excellent folks at Jester King, brewed with a simple malt bill oh, of Pilsner, oats, that. and spelt. Uh, we pitched both breweries' respective house cultures into open fermentation vessels before racking the beer into red wine barrels, where it fermented and rested for many months. It is a collab. Then they uh, they they Jester dosed it with some King. raspberries. Raspberries are in there. Definitely smell some raspberries. They say the end results, this outrageously tasty beer with an intense raspberry aroma that carries through the flavor alongside a funky, rustic acidity that is an absolute joy to apply to the taste buds. I like it. I like it a lot. I say quick write up and read that. Yeah. So the Jester King. It smells funky. One of one of my favorite breweries. Which I'll be hitting on the way out. So we were talking about that. You know, last, last week we talked about it being uh, International Beer Day as well as uh, uh, IPA Day. IPA Day. And then uh, we we didn't have a whole lot to talk about, and you mentioned you were going on a trip. Yes, I'm going out. I'm heading east, and I will be going through Texas. So I may make the swoop down and uh, hit Gesture King. I don't even know if they're open. I hope that they are, because if they are, I can at least pick up some spawn and get the heck out of there. And, uh, you know, then I'm going to head, you know, if I I do go the route I usually go, I will hit um, Southern Grist. 
and Bearded Iris. I like it. And then my way up to Virginia, The Veil, The Answer, and then I will end up in Arlington, Virginia, which is only an hour and 40 minutes from, uh, I think it's uh, Cambridge, uh, Maryland. Where where, RAR? Where RAR is, yeah. Okay. So if that happens, everything's good. So I'm going to hit as many as I can. And then on the way back, uh, I'm going to try and hit a couple, not not near as many because you just want to make it home. Um, but uh, I've got uh, my nephew, uh, Tyler, um, hitting uh, the answer up and grabbing everything that they have that's available. So that's going to be my biggest haul. It'll be from the answer. But uh, RAR, the reason I'm going to RAR is because they got like three beers that I am super excited about. But uh, on this road trip, it's going to be drive fast, drive hard, you know, 14-hour days, you know, driving. But uh, if I'm stopping for beers, it's just in and out type things. You know, I'm not going to hang out and drink beers. I'm just going to get them and go. I like it. So Bring them back so I can drink them. Yeah. So there's not going to be a lot of tasting going on until I get home. But uh, we're definitely uh, definitely excited about uh, this trip, even though it's, it's, it's kind of crazy, you know, when you, you know, take your – Take cars back and forth across the United States. I'm taking my uh, youngest daughter's car back to college and dropping it off at her apartment. And then I'm driving or I'm going to get picked up from my middle daughter, drive me up to Arlington, and we're going to drive her car back after she moves out of her apartment and comes home. So I like it. Well, after uh, after that, you know, looking forward, uh, I guess it'll be the, the 17th. We'll uh, probably pop a bottle or two uh, from from that trip. Well, I'm hoping I'm hoping I can get some of the uh, <clears throat> ten layer cake from the RAR because I don't know if you experienced that last mm-hmm. time. I don't think so. Goodness, I think I might have given half of them away on my way back. I think I gave uh, a crawler of uh, uh, ten layer and um, a crawler of uh, one of uh, the answers high enders, you know, crawlers that they produce and i gave them to um the gal that um her and her husband owned uh, 450 north i like it and uh because she was so generous to me giving me some of their uh slush mellow i think that oh, one was yeah, that, yeah a, 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 a growler of uh yeah, slush mellow it I was believe. phenomenal i like it well yeah. speaking of phenomenal beers what do you uh what do you think of this guy here this thing's amazing it smells. It smells every bit of modern times, but you taste it, and you taste Jester King in there. Let me tell you, definitely one of it's probably my favorite sour beer. The um, is you it know, wild? Did they say it was wild? Uh yeah, open open fermentation yeah. vessels. I'm a big they, fan of um, fermentation. Pitched with, I believe, both of their both of their cultures. They um, remember the first year this this beer came out, and um, uh, we we had gotten them uh. They were they were only in big bottles. I think this year they were in uh, they were in small oh, bottles. You had to bring that up, didn't you? And so they, uh, I'm definitely excited because <laughs> uh, I said to, I was going to bring see. a big bottle, and this is not. Well, there you a go. Big you bottle. showed up with a with a tiny bottle, but, yeah, but it's still uh, you can bring. You know, I, I'm a bigger fan of those because you could actually grab one by yourself. Thanks, um, Jeremy. But it was a phenomenal beer. I'm definitely looking forward to that that coming back. That is a. Uh, I mean, little a, little tartar than than the last 12. time. Now this six ounces. This beer is probably a year and a half. What do you think the ABV um, is on that bad boy? Not a six, maybe six point three. It's about six point three. That's that's pretty generous. Actually. The um, trying to think when this beer came out. It's probably it's probably creeping up on a year. It's probably eighteen months. It's probably been sitting around, but still like tasting phenomenally. Great looking um, label too. If anybody ever, if if you don't know Gesture King. Um, I would, uh, I would look up their, just their, their emblem is pretty cool. The barrel with the horns coming out of it. I love that. I have that on the back of my rig. So I like Big it. Fan of gesture King and I like modern it. times too, but the collaboration is just like the, uh, the love child. Yeah. I'm a fan. That was the, uh, I think the first time I had heard of gesture King is when, uh, the shrine of the forsaken, uh, uh, came up for the first time and, and batch one. I think it was the first beer I'd had from there that Should I was like, this is phenomenal. Should we mention our trip? Uh, maybe for another uh, another episode, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about uh, maybe when we focus on Jester King, we'll have uh, we definitely have some stories um, oh, on trips to uh, good to Lord, brewery. We have some trips 
store it up on those too. I'm a huge fan of this. You can definitely taste the raspberries. It's like raspberry jam. It's held up really well over the the 18 months of, of aging. It's got a little tart to it. A I, yeah, tart, it is. It is funk, a little. It's little tartar. Dunk, it's tarter than it originally was, but I, I think dunk still holding would be up pretty funk well. Funk and dank, wouldn't it? All right, I could. <laughs> I could. You could convince me. The um, yeah, I'm a this, fan. I, uh, you should grab the rest of those bottles. There's a little bit of a again. schmegma at the bottom there. That's that sediment that uh, that happens. It's a it's a natural occurrence. But I I love that part. That's my favorite part. Jeremy I like seems it. to like it too. So I'm a fan. The uh, I'm definitely a fan of that. Ah, yes, sir, I am. You know the uh, uh, so we're at the podcraft at Instagram. Uh, the podcraft. At the podcraft at Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook.com. Did I uh, did I mention that earlier? I think you got it right that time. Very well. All right. Yes. So we do have one more beer. I was just uh I was wondering if I had actually uh mentioned our Spotify and all of that at the beginning of this episode. I think you, you might have been uh taken over by the beer yeah. you're drinking. Uh, you're fine. All right. So it's our second good. producer Steve says I was all right. Did you guys hear that out there? He hasn't drank anything yet. Well, <laughs> very well. I don't so trust him. Our next beer, uh, our next beer is a stout from Modern Times. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of their stouts. Uh, Fellowship of Zool. Uh, so Fellowship of Zool is a uh, is a pastry stout, it's imperial stout, aged in bourbon barrels with peanut butter, uh, cocoa nibs, uh, vanilla, coconut, and almonds. That added. means I'm waiting. I, you're waiting. There you go. So the uh, the Fellowship of Zool. This uh, this beer Did is actually uh, watch. the uh, the the original. They they note is a liquid homage to uh, one of their favorite Theory of Leisure members, Cassidy, aka Zool. Uh, and if uh, if if you look at uh, Zool's profile on Untapped, uh, this gentleman has the most amazing write ups on beers um, that, that, is, he, that he does there at uh, on Modern Times Beers. That's a rich smelling beverage, super rich. So the uh, so they say it's liquid liquid homage to their favorite theory member Cassidy. Uh, this bourbon barrel aged imperial pastry boy was loaded with peanut butter, cocoa nibs, vanilla, coconut, and almonds. It's as decadent as the as it is delicious and worthy tribute to one of the chillest dudes ever. I like it. Let's see what we smell on that guy. It smells fantastic. So I smell vanilla. You, you don't smell like any heat on there. You don't smell the the barrel really. No. Maybe a little bit of coconut and coconut and vanilla, I think, is really what uh, what I smell on there. I'm smelling the cocoa nibs. <laughs> Give it a little taste. Wow. That's really rich. It is rich. I, I think um, I've tasted a lot not of, as rich as some. I've tasted a lot of stouts from there, and this is super mild, and I like it. Yeah. Because the flavor is just magnificent. I think you catch a little... Uh, you definitely catch a little bit of that vanilla in there. I think definitely the coconut the and some peanut. Is that the peanut you catch yeah, on the back I'm, I'm end? Get, I got the peanut on the back end for sure. I definitely, when I smell it, I think I smell way more coconut and and vanilla. But when you taste it, like as strong as that vanilla, and, and maybe is that a little bit of the, the, the barrel you smell? Did you, yep, did you jump on our ABV here? Because hmm. this thing is probably, oh, oh. It's coming in out there. 13.5. Ooh, that's the real 5. deal. I like it. That's not playing around. The um, that's a phenomenal beer. That's a very very good beer. Yeah, it's, you know what? I'm going to say something about this is that it's hard to get that much alcohol in a beer and have it taste so alcohol less. Well, that's yeah, exactly. It doesn't. It's not hot. You definitely don't. You don't taste. Doesn't taste boozy. No, they, not you know, you don't all. taste. It's not overly barrel characteristics. Everything melds really, really well in and there. If it's if it's a smooth stout, I'm all day. But if it if it's sharp, you know, something that's really, really over the top, I can't even drink it. I don't think I can taste it, but I can't drink it. What do we say when we pop these? You got to have like four people here to drink them because they're so rich, right? But this thing is like something. That you and I could probably polish off and then go to bed. I mean, not together. <laughs> I mean, not this time, of course. <laughs> it's a very, very good beer. I'll give you 15 yeah. minutes to stop that. See, it's funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just all downhill. The uh... <laughs> Drink up. <laughs> On that note. 
the uh, no, it's a phenomenal beer. I, I definitely, uh, I'm, a, I'm a huge, huge fan. Once again, I've, I've been, I've been sitting on this bottle for a minute. Uh, this this bottle came out, uh, I believe, little probably right right up on a year ago. Um, you know, I, I I don't have any notes of, of the last time when I when I had my last bottle, but well, it's I'll definitely this a phenomenal one. beer. I'll remember this. I look one. forward to another rendition of it. This is this reminds me of a horse horse stout. Yeah, I think you uh, know just that whole just that smooth flavor. I mean, you get you're getting everything in there, and it's just not kicking your fanny on the palate you know yeah, yeah. the the smell is just yeah. it's amazing yeah. isn't it the horse was amazing and yeah this is in the same it's, it's yeah. right there huh i like yeah. it this uh it's sh- it's a phenomenal beer 13%. i've been waiting for it to to come out again i haven't uh, i haven't seen it um but um i'm sure when we uh well that at some point i have one of those stashed in a box somewhere but I didn't even know I had it. So. Yeah, so funny story. I, you know, me and Charlie were was talking the other day. Was it really funny? Well, the you know, I was I, I was telling him <laughs> this I is the bottle you? of beer that I was going to bring, and and uh, Charlie's like, I never heard of it. All right, Steve. so we uh, you know we had walked into his garage while uh, while we were looking, uh, we were going through through Charlie's beers to try and determine which beer he was going to pour, uh, and um, he's you know I, I just randomly grabbed a box that was sitting there in the. I think the first beer I pulled out was a Doomhawk uh, from uh, like Extraordinary Times, a Doomhawk. And the second bottle I pulled out was this uh, this bottle Charlie had never heard of, uh, this Fellowship <laughs> no, of Zool. The I'm very sure, bottle, I'm sure I read it in an email the very, somewhere. The very bottle that's been sitting on this. So it's we, well fermented. There is one more yeah. that will. Uh, uh, it was a we'll it was a delicious surprise to say the least, wasn't it? Sure was. I'm a fan. Hey Charlie, which of those two beers did you like uh, better? There, um, I like them both. Man. They're both phenomenal. I'm not. It's, I'm not a. I'm not a. I. I, I like them both. I mean, I, I'm so such a big fan of uh, their sours and their wild uh, beers, and then the stouts. I mean, I tasted a lot of their stouts. Yeah, and a lot of them, I just they're just too too decadent, too rich for me. But this one is is uh, totally in the ballpark. That for thing me. hits it on every level for me. That stout does, you know, like when you when you speak to this the to the sweetness, it, it certainly doesn't. Uh, uh, it's not overly sweet. Like some of those, um, yeah, they're too rich. Some I mean, of them get too sweet. This one isn't isn't there. It's not like super pastry, like really sweet, like a lot of them. You know, it does contain the almonds and and peanuts for those of you with a with a peanut allergy or the uh, with a nut Avoid allergy, it, like the plague. Send those bottles uh, Charlie's way, yep. my way. Um, I would definitely do that one again. You know these two uh, these two beers. They uh, you know I had this buddy uh, these these buddies growing up, um, John and Don Steppen. They were uh, thunder and lightning. We called them. They couldn't have been more different. Uh, but both of them were were super solid guys. And that's kind of these beers. You know, thunder yeah, and I'm gonna have to agree. Thunder I mean, and lightning. Anything anything that's done by Jester King has to be perfection because those guys are super legit. You know, so if they're working with modern times, you know they're quite happy with the uh, the establishment that modern I would times is. But uh, that thing right there, it's good beer. Yeah, pretty impressed. I like it. There's many, many more uh, uh, stouts, modern time stouts. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, as we move they, forward, they started canning their beers, their their stouts. They have started, which is canning ex- their- very I'm- exciting because you could pop one with just one other person. Which is probably what we should have done. <laughs> Step down a notch, but yeah, here know, we are. I forgot. You know, the last time I was in a per, uh, pandemic, I forgot how important it was to have twelve ounce stouts. Yeah. So well, I'm glad that Modern Times uh, reminded they've, they've me. They reminded that. us of their of our pandemic problem. Yeah. So the uh, <clears throat> that's that's like been my biggest problem this pandemic is uh, uh, drinking beer, all kinds of twenty two ounce stouts, and only uh, well, a palate for twelve ounces. And I'm of willing them. to help. I like it. You just bring them on over. We'll crack them one at a time. Socially distancing. Yeah. Crack well, them. you're like six and a half feet away from me. Exactly. So we're in. We're in well further away than we should be. Actually, I like it. The uh, so out of these two beers, I I would have to. Uh, you know, I I, I love a Let sour. Which one am guess. I going with? You're going with the stout. I'm going with the stout. I'm I'm easily influenced. I like the uh, the different levels of the. Uh, 
I mean, just when when you throw seven different different things in there and you can grab each one of them out like you can in this barrel, like you get a little, you can't really smell the barrel, but yeah. you can taste I'm it. Say yeah, on that because of the fact that I can taste separate it's individual. It's a super complex beer. It's a super tasty beer. It's very very well done. Not to say that. Uh, that we're that we're not the same because maybe it, we shouldn't sour, be even judging this at all. We shouldn't even not shouldn't judging judge or reviewing. We should just drink it and shot it, mm-hmm. shot it up. I agree. On that note, I think we got one more beer. Yes, we do. Something so, you uh, brought over, fancy dancy. What we realized in podcast uh, podcast episode number one was Steve didn't uh, Steve couldn't record and drink at the same time. So since then, uh, we've offered him sniffs only during the podcast. And at the end, we have our after potty beer. After potty. So the uh, what do you got for us today, there? Uh, this is Charlie? a collaboration, which is awesome in itself. Cellar Maker and Alvarado Street. It's called Dank Williams. <laughs> Dank Williams. I love it. Yeah, I like it. It's, it's right country. up there with my other favorite <laughs> beer name, which was uh, Nuck Chorus from yes. Thorn Street Brewing. I like it. I'm a fan. Yeah, get a little taster of that. I'm Cheers. a big fan of Alvarado and oh, that's looks that's fantastic. And Cellar Maker, wow, that's a uh, it's a nice hazy. Oh, it smells it's just phenomenal. Is that Mosaic hops they're using in there? Hold on, you're gonna have to wait a second. I'm pouring. Mm. Smells phenomenal. Shout out to uh, to Harvey, one of my coworkers, uh, sent us a, a shipment of Cellar Maker beer today. Thank you for that. You ain't got nothing on this one. We got it's, nothing, huh? Yeah, it's uh, just. Says who it's brewed by, and they suggest you drink it within 21 days of canning date. And double dry hopped IPA, 8.4%. I like it. So it's a uh, Simcoe Mosaic Nelson Motueka Centennial Chinook and CTZ hopped uh, IPA, double IPA. Uh, and you said this was double dry hopped. Uh, Cascade yeah. to right there on the side. Where? Uh, over on the other side. On the side. It's going sideways. So as we were, while Charlie uh, goes ahead and, and takes a peek at that bottle, I'll just uh, recap, or re- recap this episode. We had a couple of beers here from uh, from Modern Times. We had Fellowship of Zool, which was my favorite. We also had uh, Shrine of the Forsaken. I paid uh, no attention to that beer can. Shrine of the Forsaken Gods. But the so what we have is uh, um, just as Charlie said earlier, it There's was no uh, keep cold, drink within twenty one days. So I, I was I, I sent you on the proverbial wild goose chase. I get the big question mark. He spun that can around about nine times, uh, looking for what I was pointing yeah, out. It but hampered my drinking. <laughs> I apologize for that. As we were, uh, great, great selection. It's it is really good, especially after drinking a just super heavy hop or uh, stout. This this is tasty. Yeah, you guys are all over the board today. We mm-hmm. are. We've we've <laughs> definitely ran the the gauntlet. We had stouts, We're reckless sours, at times. we uh, IPAs to start out with, and then we uh, and we also, we went local, then local, then local far away, mm-hmm. and local even crazy time. You know, with the uh, Shrine of Forsaken Gods. That's a good beer. I'm a fan. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Absolutely. So once Maybe again, some uh, good naming. Feel free to give us a follow at the podcraft at uh, on, on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, our webpage, thepodcraft.com, our email at thepodcraftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can uh, provide us with any questions, suggestions, show ideas, any type of feedback. Be easy on Charlie and I. Please. Uh, be a little harsher on Steve. He can take it. Namaste. Uh, the... Uh, what else? Uh, hey, we're available on Google Podcast, uh, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and Make YouTube as well. <laughs> the Charlie, that's uh, I think that's about it for me and beers. Just cheers, buddy. Cheers to that. We'll see you next week. Uh, we'll we'll hit on. Uh, I guess it'll be uh, the seventeenth of August, almost Christmas time, and uh, it'll we'll, be a surprise. It will be a surprise because we'll, we're going to have some legit East Coast beers. I mean, I I just found a hookup for the other half. I like it. So it sounds like we're going to uh, catch some beers from uh, Virginia to San Diego and all parts in between. Maryland, Virginia, Nashville, Texas. I like it. I'm I'm looking forward to it. 
Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll see where we land. Yeah, no El Pastor tacos, please. No El Pastor tacos. There's a story for the future. <laughs> Thanks for listening. We look forward to seeing you next week. Cheers. The Podcraft Podcast is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution, Share Alike 4.0 International. All rights reserved 2020. The podcast is produced by AztecMedia.net. If you have questions, please email thepodcraftpodcast at gmail.com. Fair use notice. Reference material and media have been placed within this medium for information, educational, and discussion purposes only in compliance with the fair use criteria established in Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976. It should also be noted that the opinions expressed on this podcast are those of the participants and are not endorsed by the participants' previous, current, or future employers or advertisers. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go! Oh, oh.